What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 291 of Opinions May Vary. I'm your host, JR, and my co-host with me, Alex. Hello. Hey, man. Hi. Yeah, that's good. You survived. I did. You survived your weekend. Rough weekend. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> how In the past three days, how many hours have you worked? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, almost 50. Yeah. 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 So the average person in three days would work about 24 yeah. on an eight-hour day. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, that's nice. <laughs> Joining us this week is uh, two. I was going to say two of my favorite people. I just met. I just met one of them though. But <laughs> I guess now you've been elevated. Um, yes. So there it is. There it's a. Uh, that was Peter, by the way. Peter, thank you for coming on. Oh, hello. And and also joining us is Monique. Hello. Hi, Mo. Hi. I called you. Mo. Oh my God. Me and Mo know each other. <laughs> uh, Monique Dubois. Um, and you guys are here because we're talking about the one thing. That everyone, when they tune in this show, they're like, yo, I can't wait to hear them talk about this. It's theater. Local theater. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's what everyone... Absolutely, yeah. It, this is another episode of our friends are in this really cool thing, and we're like, hey, <laughs> come talk about it, because we want other people to know about it. So that's what's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how, what, what kind of intro. What, what, what are you guys doing? Who wants to tell us what you're doing? Who wants you know to take... that thing? Yeah. That thing that's been around for forever... Maybe. Yeah. Well, somebody oh, did something new with it. Uh-huh. And now we're doing that thing. Okay. Okay. That new old thing. <laughs> that new old thing. The old new thing? No. The, did I get it wrong? The, the oldest uh. of the new things. <laughs> the Adams Family musical is what we're trying is what we're trying nice. to say. Oh nice. wait. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I thought we were talking about something else. I briefly touched on Adams Family a couple weeks ago when I mentioned Kinetic Horror Fest. And, uh, and getting my DVD set signed oh. by Wednesday herself. Yes. yes. The original. It was the endeavor. But you did it. Yeah, yeah. I I went back twice because I wasn't sure if I wanted to, to foot the bill the first time. Is that where the Adams Family originated? Was it the TV show? Or no. was it? No. No, actually. It was not. Let's discuss. <laughs> Let's do it. It, Chuck, was, it, it was. It was Chuck, right? No, he goes by Charles. Charles, Charles Adams. Charles Adams, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he did comic strips in the, or comics in the New Yorker. In the 1930s. I feel like I should know that. And I feel like it's probably pretty bad that I didn't. So like any of the, the art, like the illustrated art that you see for Adam Stanley? Right. It's really a version of his original drawings. Yes, yeah, most of that sort of thing. So like the, the show poster that we have, and it's usually used for like, you know, productions of the show. Mm-hmm. It's all like his drawings and his portrait of the family. There's one hanging in my, my bedroom. Fantastic. It's Excellent. giant metal. Yeah, because I I managed to acquire uh, the 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 sign that was the ad for the for the Hartford run that came around in 2012. Nice, nice. Yeah, and it's it's like four feet tall, just like me. Good, <laughs> good for, friend, for good. the listening audience. I am four feet tall and about three feet wide. <laughs> oh. Just just to give you some perspective for the listening audience. Friend Will got it for me, and because uh, we saw the. The, the the touring show mm-hmm. when that came around yeah Charles Adams and uh, his estate is still around doing stuff and signing off on things um, which there's been confusion here and there in the past uh, I don't know if you ever saw the Adult Wednesday Adams YouTube series no yeah nope. so there was know a, that the, that was a thing there was yeah there was a girl um, I'm not I'm gonna forget her name now oh, I'll look it up <laughs> I look it up in a second. Uh, she was doing an Adult Wednesday Adams, and she was doing like like a like a web series, mm-hmm. and I think she had at least ten episodes, if not longer, and they're about four minutes apiece. And she did season one, and that went pretty well, and people were big fans of it, and it kind of got spread around. And then she went to do season two. She's like, let's raise production values and let's do a Kickstarter, and she was able to raise some money, and I contributed to it, and I got like a postcard, and like where she's like sitting on my grave, and like my name's on the grave and everything. <laughs> oh yeah. man, yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. yep, and. Uh, then like it, it would like say like how you died and whatever, it, but then like she was able to produce season two, and like as season two is coming out, someone like reported copyright violation. Oh no! And even though like it was basically a parody, mm-hmm. it got taken down and shut down, and like fans were getting too internet angry about it. And she's like, mm-hmm. no, wait, mm-hmm. stop, calm down, don't, don't bother the Charles Adams Foundation. Like, don't just they're cool with it it's just we we have to work with youtube somehow right. so just let's all just be cool and don't be angry we'll get through it because we're all fans of the same thing mm-hmm. don't 
don't be mean. <laughs> right. Yeah, but she's going on to do other acting stuff. She's like really working it and hustling, and trying to like get on TV and be and be an actress and everything. There's a, a really cool picture that's going around the internet again. I think probably because it's October and this, this kind of thing circulates. It's Christina Ritchie dressed up oh, yeah. in the Morticia dress. Okay, <laughs> and it's the coolest thing in the world. And it would be amazing if they did either a Grown Up Wednesday you know sequel or you know some kind of official reboot with her as morticia i have an issue with that picture here we go <laughs> oh i'm so ready please tell it's photoshop <laughs> no it's not real it's no nope why take, take a good look at it like her it's she shopped in if you find a uh that's a promo image for um who is movie morticia the movie Morticia Adams. Uh, Angelica Houston. Yes. There's, there's like a promo picture of her at the same chair, mirrored and flipped. Oh, no. So they flipped it and like put her head on it and like made her a little shorter and then put that wicked V-cut down her. Mm. Everything and, I know is a lie. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's and everyone, really and everyone's like, look, she posed the thing. She didn't pose the thing. And like, <laughs> she's been real quiet about it. And like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's great. It's a great picture. And everyone would love for that to actually happen. But promote it as we made this piece of art sure. and don't promote it as this actually happened. Yeah. Mm. I'm, a, I'm, I'm angry at things that don't actually happen. That yeah. They happened. For sure. And I'm, I'm really sorry to do this to you. That's okay. I'm <laughs> just, I mean, we just met dream and crusher. And so upset. Do, is that, yeah, that's her like with the chair. Mm -hmm. And then there's the, uh, the Christina Ricci version. So they just, Man. they flipped it and added the deep, the deep V. That's a bummer. That is a bummer. Now we know. For like a hot second, we were all so happy. <laughs> <laughs> and then as, Alex as, crushed our dreams. Thanks, thanks for tuning in, guys. Ruined <laughs> everyone. Episode 291. Yep. This is it. We're done. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Melissa Hunter. Melissa Hunter was uh, was Adult Wednesday Adams. Cool. And it was like mm -hmm. a web series. It was like, mm -hmm. if Wednesday Adams had to grow up and be an adult. Yeah. And how she would interact with people in the real world. And like moved to real LA world. and she was like taking odd jobs around. <clears throat> and like that like really contributed to like her experiencing the new environment and everything. Mm -hmm. And she was like walking someone else's dog and there was a girl and and uh, and she's like, get your mangy mutt out of here. And she's like, I can't take credit for its mange. It's not mine. <laughs> yeah, it was good stuff. Yeah, it was, awesome. there was a lot of good work Quick, in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So speaking of all this Adam's family talk, because mm -hmm. you guys are yeah. in... There's a show coming up with Exit 7. Exit 7, which probably has been mentioned on this show in the past. Probably. Seeing as Joe has <laughs> been in like 30 of their shows. Um, 30, right? Probably yeah, give or take. Give or take. <laughs> give or take. A few. Um, what, what's happening? You guys are putting on... I want to know more about this show. How how did it... How was it decided? Because like you got... Exit 7 does three, two. How many shows a year? Um, Four? Four? Well, they do a youth production in the summer. Um, they just did a September show, now the fall show, and then they're doing a February show. So five, technically. Mm -hmm. So four adult, so to speak, shows, and then a youth production. Right. So, like, what's the vote that when they come around, like, how so do you know what you're going to do next? The board <laughs> uh -huh. decides. So if you want to be a director and you want to direct something, you can come to the board with your idea of this is the show that I want to do, and then mm -hmm. you have to propose it, and then the board votes on it Okay. as to whether or not it will happen. I feel like Adam's family is just kind of like a... It, if you came to me, if I was the board, <laughs> like, hey, Adam's family, yeah, yep, that's the board. So. That's the show. <laughs> Yeah, like proposals do they have to like lay out like logistics or what scenes might be or is it just like talking you have about... to have a, a vision for yeah, it yeah. yeah you have to have a vision for what you're what you want to happen on stage i mean you don't have to have scene by scene right this person will go here mm -hmm. but you have to have an overall vision and <laughs> you know the way it is in, in any theater you want to fill your season with with a variety of things mm -hmm. and you want to have i mean at the end of the day it's show business mm -hmm. you want to make mm -hmm. something that will sell yeah and i mean the adams family musical in october at the end right. of the month it's, it's a no-brainer <laughs> yeah, right exactly. like you would think that every theater would be doing it every october <laughs> but um yeah it's just it's something that will not only bring in people because it's a recognizable property but mm -hmm. also because people are in that mood mm -hmm. they're excited for that kind of spooky weird uh you know end of <laughs> october halloweeny thing how do you are there any uh rules or do, how do we feel about people showing up in costume 
Like, uh, can, I don't like, think there, I, there are no rules. Can I don't someone think. wear their Wednesday dress like to go see? I don't show? see why not. Go I mean, I don't it. think we've actually discussed that <laughs> as a theater group, but because because uh, I don't see why not. Like I was saying before, when when me and and Will and our friends went to see it in Hartford, uh, like we dressed up. Mm-hmm. You, oh, nice. you you don't go to a show and like not get dressed up. It's it's a, a nice event to go to. Like I wouldn't wear sandals and a t shirt or anything. That would be. <laughs> <laughs> We're not savages here. <laughs> what, am, what am I, a farmer? <laughs> and, and, uh, and another thing, when I was looking at the dates, I was like, and because uh, I saw it pop up on uh, on uh, Facebook invites. You're welcome. And Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then I was like, oh, a really cool thing I'm not going to be able to see because I'm doing Halloween stuff and oh. I'm working at haunted houses. And then I saw there was dates that extended past Halloween, and I was like, "Oh yes!" <laughs> and like, and I was like, "I wonder how much of a conscious decision that was, because so many people that work in the haunt industry never get weekends off, mm-hmm. and just like to push that one extra weekend, and like we all have free time now. <laughs> Once we break down the haunt and, and clean up the blood, and you know, take the makeup <laughs> off when we're people again, and that and the chance to like make Halloween last a little bit longer." Mm. Yeah. I don't so, know if it was actually a conscious decision to make it go into November. <laughs> or do they normally run for like an even amount of weekends? Or it's always three weekends. Okay. Yeah. So it's either eight or nine shows. Okay. At least for Exit Seven. Mm-hmm. Other theaters do it differently. Which we haven't mentioned yet. Uh, that we have the two leads of the show. Oh, right? oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a. <laughs> We're just, we're just two true. people. We're just random people talking about it. <laughs> it's kind of a big deal. Um, I'm actually the lighting designer. Right. I, um, I will be playing the lights. I mean, let's be real here. If, if the lights weren't there, you don't see, see show, you don't right. see the show. Yeah. The, light, the lights are the real MVP of the show. <laughs> but seriously, Peter, you're going to be playing uh, Gomez. Yeah, that's right. And, and Mo, you're playing Morticia. Indeed. Which is it? This is the most just expected question. Is it really hard to cuz like with the the legendary portrayals of these characters, obviously with Raul Julia like living with John um <laughs> and his 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 uh, deep appreciation of Raul Julia's portrayal of Gomez and um like is it hard to not just 100% duplicate what they did cuz like they did it so well? Or is it just like, no, I'm going to do that because that's the way you do it. Mm-hmm. Like, is there like, is there your own spin on the character? Like what, how do you guys approach that? Well, I, I personally think that, um, because the, the musical's not after the movies True. or the TV show, mm-hmm. it's based more on the cartoon, um, that was in the New Yorker. So I went to all of those forms of media to do research, um, So kept some of the iconic Morticia straight face stuff, um, but then added my own Monique twist to it. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Sure. Yeah. And and because there's so many different iterations and now that the musical has been out for, I mean, it's been in production in different places between the original, you know, Broadway to the touring to, you know, local, you know, theaters all over the country doing Mm it. Mm -hmm. There's even a, a greater range of people playing these characters right. that you know it's it's often hard especially with a musical because usually when preparing for a musical in this kind of um setting you'll listen to the soundtrack and so you're constantly <laughs> hearing the specific voice okay. of the songs you have to sing yeah um done over and over and over again just to learn get the songs in your head and so um yeah it's a big challenge to to remove yourself from that and remember you are not, you know, I'm not Raul Julia. I'm not Nathan Lane. I'm not um, Nathan John Lane Astin. played played Gomez. He was the yeah, first on the Broadway. Broadway. On Broadway. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which once I went touring, I was kind of glad because I didn't. Nothing against Nathan Lane, mm-hmm. but I didn't want to see him as as Gomez. He's a handful. <laughs> yeah, and and the Gomez that we got was really good. I, I'm going to keep going back to that because that's the uh-huh. little experience I have. But also like. One of the issues with that was that like Nathan Lane would come out and people are cheering Nathan Lane, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. they're not cheering. It's like Zona. a distraction. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that'll happen a lot of times with with shows that you know maybe the um, the production company isn't sure about the script or some part of the production, so they attach a star to it just mm-hmm. to make sure it has some kind of a draw, the draw, draw to it yeah. exactly. Um, 
you see a lot of shows do that. I mean, How to Succeed in Business without really trying, they did a revival. They brought in Daniel Radcliffe <laughs> to play the lead. Yeah. And so that, that, you know, for something that they're not sure, is this going to work? Is this not? You know, and so people will come to see Daniel Radcliffe playing this this part and hopefully fall in love with the show mm-hmm. as a result. But, um, yeah, it's it's definitely a challenge and because there's such a precedent set um but as mo was saying this is this is a new story this is something that is you know again another version of this just like the movies aren't a continuation of the show right and the show isn't a direct extension of the cartoon Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it's a lot of it is just going right to the script you know using some of the details of the the previous iterations you know it's fun to take little things that you mm-hmm. get here and there um what i do like it's i hadn't thought of that before mm-hmm. because there's other things where um we're getting so used to sequels mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. direct sequels of things and like how they're gonna fit in together between the marvel movies or other right. you know comic book movies and things and there's so, always so much like intent on tying them together it's like well you can't have just different terminators they have to be related somehow right or like mm-hmm. mark ruffalo Ed Norton, that yeah. whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, the people were shaken up and didn't want to see the <laughs> Avengers movie because they were like, no, 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 it's not the same. Why is... Yeah. Right. Whereas, like, I never... I'm just watching stories about characters that I like, never really caring mm. if um, if there was something from the original series that was carried into the movie, or even there was the series sometime in the late 90s, early 2000s, that was, like, on ABC Family or something. The cartoon? Yeah. No, there was like a live action. Yup, it's it's that it was that popular where none. Of oh them. wow! <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. nobody's heard of it. That's what I seem to be struggling with too, is because I don't like old television shows. Mm-hmm. Like my my family used to watch. Um, what was that? It was on like Sunday nights. On there was like a Nick at Night too. Yeah, Nick at Night. Yeah, mm-hmm. hate it. <laughs> I hate old TV shows because oh, I loved it. Watch uh, I Love Lucy, Black and White. Mm, yeah, no, <laughs> no. I, I didn't get it as a kid. Uh-huh. I was like, I don't. Why is she making that I face? Loved it as a kid. I know. I know. <laughs> no, it's, see, it's terrible. I'm in your camp because it took me until like end of high school to except for the shows like Gilligan's Island that really appealed like the comedy Mm -hmm. but like shows that you know that black and I was like why watch it in black and white right if you can watch it in color yeah you know and Mm -hmm. that was always my rationale until maybe around college and I started you know finding some other older shows that interested me and you know I wanted to do for research for just as being a Mm -hmm. comedian Mm -hmm. to have that kind of knowledge also I just love pop culture stuff yeah I mean, I just wanted to watch cartoons when I was a kid, right. and anything that wasn't a cartoon or <laughs> salute your shorts. I love salute your shorts, <laughs> salute your shorts. right? Yes. But uh, like growing up, I didn't really dig the old shows, so I didn't see really any of the the original television show or the the TV show back in the if day. If you were to go back and watch it now, you would discover so many jokes, probably that you would have missed as a kid. Because mm-hmm. um, I like even the discs that I just showed you. I've only gotten through one of those discs so far because I just haven't had time to like put them in and take so much work. Uh, right? <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. Especially when you can't just stream it. <laughs> but like, but there's so many like just puns and jokes and back and things that are creepy. And it's like I need to be taking notes. This is good. And one of my favorites was like Gomez is going to support like the guy running for mayor. And like yeah. one of the signs he made was the guy so nice to vote for him twice. <laughs> that's that's illegal though. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, that's and, the joke. And, like, um, and, and he holds a sign up, and like you read it, and then he just nods and puts it down and continues with the scene. <laughs> and I'm over here like, wait, go back, go back. I have to make sure I get this right. <laughs> oh. But like someone like me, who my my main experience with the Adams family is the movie, the one that everyone knows with mm-hmm. with Christina Ricci and 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 Christopher uh, Lloyd. 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 Mm-hmm. Yep, I was I was getting there. I'll eventually get there. <laughs> So that's my, <clears throat> that's like my only experience with them. And it, even then, even then, the first time I saw that movie in its entirety, all the way through, last year. What? Right. <laughs> right. I actually, true statement, confession time, uh-huh. had not seen either of the movies until we started this show. Whoa. Poor shame. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I know. It just never. I grew up with those movies. Yeah. yeah. It, it was another, movies. I think I just told this story when you got the DVD signed. Right, yeah. Um, I'm, t- again. I'm telling it again. Yeah, I'm it doing again. it. I don't even care. We have two people here who have, at least haven't heard it. So <laughs> mm-hmm. um, that's 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 two. I it was like one of those things where like you know you're with the right person, and like Mo knows, Mo knows my wife. Like I do. 
they're they're good pals. She knows she's good. <laughs> but like I came home one day from work, like back when I was in retail and like working like late nights, not late, like late afternoons, night shifts, blah blah. I got home from work and uh before I could even like come into the living room, it was I'm watching the Adams family because I don't give a fuck. And I was like, cause my wife does not watch television like on her own. It's normally like I'll put something on and she'll watch it, but mm-hmm. she's not a TV person. Mm-hmm. Um, she really just doesn't watch too much. Um, so to, to come home to see, to like hearing the TV on, it's mm-hmm. like, what, <laughs> what's happening? Who's visiting? Uh, and then like to see that it's the Adams family. So like I finally, I sat down and the first time I saw it, like in its entirety mm-hmm. was like with my wife. And it was nice, and I was like, mm. "Yeah, Aww. yeah, uh-huh. I did. Sweet. I did a good thing. <laughs> I did a good thing with this one." But um, and then even then, like that's like my main experience. That's what I'm getting at with the Adams Family. Mm-hmm. So whenever I hear like, "Oh, we're doing the Adams Family musical," obviously it's based on the movie, duh, because that's the only thing I know about. <laughs> yeah. So like, I just continuously, it's really hard for me to like break away from. Uh, that's why I'm really also one of the many reasons I'm really excited to see this show is because like it's I get to see it in a new light. I get to see everyone mm. singing. <laughs> <laughs> I I always knew I wouldn't be cool enough to be a Gomez when I was younger. So cuz oh. I I would see the you movie. You can't limit yourself like I, that, man. I, well, so here hang on. <laughs> <laughs> so like I you know, I watched the movie a bunch of times and I realized I wouldn't be as cool as as Gomez is. But Fester was pretty damn cool. Mm-hmm. And the part where, like, he constructs the parts for Wednesday and Pugsley's, Pugsley's play when they're reciting Shakespeare and sword fighting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, like, they just start gushing blood. And I'm like, I could do that. Yeah. I, could, <laughs> I could grow up to do that. And look at me now. Another, I, yeah. another downside? I just see Fester as a villain. What? Because in the movie, he's like the doppelganger. Yeah, yeah right? I've got a lot he of come, problems. He comes I, around. Oh man, it's fine. I, but he the whole movie, yeah, yeah, the whole. It's, it's, it, as it somebody who up. saw the movie as an adult, I I have so many issues with the way they handled that entire thing. Of just like it's not Fester. Yeah, it's Fester. It's, it's not. <laughs> is it? Yes, it is. No. Yes, it is. <laughs> and that whole back and forth of like, oh, guess what? I guess maybe maybe by the end of the script they were like, oh. What do we want? And then they're like, <laughs> "Perfect, he's Fester. We'll make a sequel." Uh, a top guy here wouldn't know how to dance the mamushka, so right, mm. which is also very confusing because at that point in <laughs> the movie, you're still thinking like, "Is he <laughs> what?" Right. And the, the second one, mm-hmm. Debbie mm-hmm. would have fit in so well. I'm kind of disappointed yeah. she didn't. Right. Yeah. Sad she didn't work out. Yeah, it's it's just like in like when the great grandma is like an axe classic. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Respect. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, but musical though. The, the musical. musical. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we here? Um, so the new Star Wars trailer. No, um, yo, hundred percent on board. Star Wars, by the way. Right. <clears throat> uh, sorry. Yeah, me too. I got excited. <laughs> So somebody, I just want to say this for just a second. Somebody did the the guy looking away from his girlfriend meme. You know, the guy looking behind <laughs> okay. him. And With it Jar Jar? was it was yeah, it was Jar Jar Binks as the girlfriend and the porg as the, okay. the one he was looking back at. Nice. <laughs> and I don't think it's going to be quite that bad. I think it's going to be more on like Ewok level. At least I'm hoping. Instead of like the full Jar Jar. People are big fans of the porg. So. Oh man, oh, yeah. super cute! It's getting kind of crazy. Well, there's thirty thousand different pop figures devoted to this creature that is in a movie we haven't seen yet. Yep. So perfect. There's already fan fiction. Anyway, oh my on. gosh. Anyway, moving sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, go do it. What kind? What's your your performing background? Like, how long have you been performing or singing or? you know, deciding you would like to be on stage. and uh, I think the first play I was in was in elementary school. So fifth, sixth grade. I've been singing since I was five. Show dancing choir. since I was three. I was in competitive show choir. Yep. That was a thing that that's I like, did. That's like our thing, <laughs> right? Um, performed for a long time. Did you ever compete at Nutmeg? Have we discussed yes, this? Yes, yes. competed, okay. I did yeah. compete at Nutmeg. That's, that's, what, with what school? Tantasqua. It was Tantasqua? Yeah. Encore. I couldn't remember if it was just at the 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 junior at that point or if we had a high, if they no, had like we, a varsity. Oh yeah, we did high school. Yeah. Varsity choir. Show choir. Show, Alex. Competitive I, show choir. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love any competition named after a spice. 
competitive show. <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> the, num- the Nutmeg Show Choir Festival. Because it was in Connecticut. So the Nutmeg yeah, State. Yeah. And it oh, was yeah, yeah, yeah. back when I was in like middle school and like the first couple years of high school. It was a big competition. And then by the time I graduated, it was like, mm. <laughs> um, but like, because the guy who ran it like retired and he was like he's the guy with the connections. Hmm. Um, but like, but Nutmeg was like, a, that was a big deal. It was, it was a big show. And it was great because we didn't have to worry about competing. We were just the host school. <laughs> oh. So it's like, you have to, you have to give us a standing ovation, even though we're awful. <laughs> <laughs> you guys weren't awful. My Joe's senior year, my junior year was mm-hmm. our best year hands down. But then my senior year was dog shit. Oh. It was bad. It was really bad. Wait, <laughs> we, was his senior year my senior year? Uh, that was 03? in 04. Oh. 03, we did Aida. Aida. <laughs> and it was bad. We did Rent in 03. Yeah, and that's that's rad. <laughs> <laughs> the music in Rent is, like, I don't, you know, Rent's Rent, but, like, the music in Rent, love music. Mm-hmm. Gets jammed in my head for weeks. <laughs> it's so catchy. You know, Rent's Rent. <laughs> but it it has, like, four climaxes. Okay. <laughs> you never seen Rent? Is that like middles or endings? I don't endings. Know. Like it, it feels like it's like, okay, this show's about to end. So it's like the and Dark Knight? And then there's Knight? another act. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, you're, you're not wrong. Now I got it. <laughs> but anyways. But yes, I, I totally interrupted uh, your your experience in, in theater. I think that was pretty much it. Show choir, that's it. Show choir. Well, no, I mentioned all the other stuff. <laughs> uh, Mo had a part in... Uh, in a... In a show that we had an episode on. How long ago was that? With the Kickstarter episode? Yeah. God, that was like three years ago. So Joe that came... That was two years ago. Two was years that, ago? That was well, 2015. Because we were over there. We... There was a... I believe... What was it? Was it a Kickstarter? It was yes. a it Kickstarter. Yep. Yeah. And uh, and uh, regular uh, returning co-host guest Joe was like, hey, can I like come on and like do like an extra episode? And, we're like, like yep. <laughs> to support the show. <laughs> yep. And like he talked all about it. And like we slipped, it's not even a, a numbered episode. It's the JVA one shot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's the one shot outs. And like, oh well, you know, we'll fill in like twenty minutes or so, like forty minutes later. <laughs> nice. And uh, and that was for the Evil Dead musical. That was that was. Which and you played like at was, least two crucial parts, um, if you Kandarian ask me. Darian Demon Moose. That exactly. Was, like, the star of the show, and first tree from the right. Tree, and you were important. also you were also um wow the fake steering shemp, right? wheel <laughs> yeah it was a fake shemp. and the steering wheel which was such a cool like that that show kicks off and i was like i'm in love because it's a giant car on the stage kevin just found the steering wheel helmet and he was like no <laughs> <laughs> um you were also in, we saw you in urine town i yeah. saw you in urine town um what else like because you've been with exit seven for a while right and not necessarily just Exit yeah, 7. Yeah, I was... Let's see here. I've been with Exit 7 since 2014. Wow. I did 9 to 5, Young Frankenstein, the musical. Um, then You're in Town, the producers, now Adam's Family. I did Lend Me a Tenor with Mac, which is Munson Arts Council. Um, Heidi Chronicles with Westfield. Um, and then Evil Dead with Ghostlight. Right. Because I only started getting back into theater in 2014. Right. Took a seven-year break. <laughs> was that uh, when? Was that after graduating? That was after like, Six Flags. I have free time now. <laughs> oh, you mean in 2014? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was yeah. absolutely after graduating. Because <laughs> I graduated in May of 2013, moved back to the area, mm-hmm. and realized that something was missing. <laughs> And then saw an audition post for nine to five and went for it. Nice. And nice. haven't looked back. <laughs> what about you, Peter? So um, I've been doing. Um, all right. So let me put it this way. You know, the kid <laughs> in the Charlie Brown Christmas special who's like, why do I always have to be a shepherd? <laughs> <laughs> that literally was me at the age of like three or four. <laughs> So my dad was has always been really involved in like our church's worship services or when you know growing up and so um I would always be my sister and I would always be involved in their like Christmas thing mm-hmm. and so I was almost always the shepherd and all <laughs> I wanted to do was be a wise man. So I guess I could say um It's I a voted, humble request. Right, that's all I want. That's all I want. You know, this where we have, you know, instead of 20 parts, I want one of the ones that we only have 3 of, you know. Did you did you care like which one? 
No, like I mean, the frankincense of the myrrh. Or... No, it didn't matter to me. <laughs> Gold, yo, come on. <laughs> we actually did uh, years later at a at a different church when I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. Um, we did a, a, a Christmas play where it was like um, the two wise men, and then instead of Balthazar, it was Binky for some reason. <laughs> That's unrelated. The ghost from Pac Man? Right, right. And so we walked on gold frankincense, and then there was me in a giant changing color costume. It was just flashing blue the entire time, giving the, the gift to baby Jesus. Didn't, isn't uh, Joseph in the Technical or Dreamcoat? Isn't that one laced with, with Christian overtones? Is that is Yeah, because it it's, it's a mm-hmm. biblical, biblical yeah. story. Yeah. So I'm just going to, um, it was like a merging of the two. Yeah, and then That's Andrew Lloyd Webber did that one. <laughs> and, I saw uh, that show once back when I could not appreciate local theater, so I was the miserable bastard the whole time, and oh, everyone there for everyone who went with me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not, We knew exactly what you were talking about. <laughs> I was that one. Yeah. I think we can all say we've seen a show where we felt that, like, oh, yep, yeah. Yep, there's always one, and I was that one that one time. And I uh, <laughs> feel bad, feel really bad about it. And continue. <laughs> all right. <laughs> So, but anyway, uh, so I did, I did stuff at, you know, middle school, high school, and I decided, hey, this is something that I want to do, and I really can't do anything else um, well. So, um, <laughs> I had somebody... Self-deprecation. Honestly, though, like, I had somebody uh, who lived uh, in my hometown who said, who had gone out to New York and done the whole actor thing and uh-huh. dancing for years, and he said, listen, yeah. the best piece of advice I can give you is... If you can do anything else, if you have any other skills or qualities that would qualify you for another job, uh-huh. do that other job. Because this business is something that is so, like, you have to be there a thousand percent. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, okay. So I decided to go to undergrad for theater and um, did a whole bunch of shows there. Mm-hmm. Typically was doing anywhere from one to three shows a semester um, through my four years there. And... Um, I just graduated with my my BA in theater in May, hmm. and um, now I'm just back in the area. I'm back. I'm from Western Mass originally, mm-hmm. and so um, I'm here for the time being, figuring out what's exactly next. But it's probably going to be heading off to improv school, and have that you know maybe open the door towards like a Saturday Night Live or a sketch variety show, something right, like right. that. Um, and so yeah, so I've been doing it for for a while, and intend to keep doing it. <clears throat> I had something there for a second. It was it was what in your reference to like, if you're good at anything else, then mm-hmm. then just just go <laughs> try and right do, that. do something else yeah. right. Otherwise, show business is just absurd, which it is. Because there is, <laughs> I had some. I'm a bit really bad host. I had some for a split <laughs> second, and then I lost it. It was something along the lines of like how there's so many other people who will be fighting for the same job, mm-hmm. for the same exactly. spot, and like, uh, oh. When I was trying to contact Mo to come do this episode, because like you're saying, like when you start acting, and I'm even from theme park, I'm aware of like I can't have life because rehearsal. Mm-hmm. That's so a one very of thing, real statement. <laughs> it's one of the things was like, Mo, will you have time? Like when my my question was, when's rehearsal? Like, do you have time when not mm-hmm. rehearsing? And she's like, Yeah, I'm, I have this is open. I was like, Can can I eat your time, please? And can you come do episode? When I told uh, my wife, I was like, "Oh yeah, we're trying to have we're trying to have Mo on," and her literal word for word <laughs> response was, "It was chuckle, good luck." <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, that that's a very true statement because mm-hmm. anytime we try to plan anything, it's like, "Oh, I can't. I have rehearsal at two, so mm-hmm. exactly. Can we yeah. do anything before then? Mm-hmm. <laughs> How and about eight in the yeah. morning? You guys free? <laughs> Perfect." And it's so crazy because, like, even like we're not we're not being paid to do this production. Even if we were doing a paid production, yeah. it still probably wouldn't be enough to not have another job that right. requires oh. to be working mm-hmm. all day, yeah, yeah. and then yeah, yeah. be at rehearsal at night. Because mm-hmm. you know, that's just kind of the way it is. Unless you're like you know some kind of superstar, you know, <laughs> right. B or A list, you know, celebrity. Wait, you're same... not getting paid for this. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not, Mo. Um, it's that's the, interesting. It's the same thing with Joe, especially like Joe's in doing a lot of the 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 theater and all that, like. Getting him like, hey, we're doing a thing this weekend. Are you free? And when it's a yeah, it's it's like the oh. horns sound and like fireworks shoot off because he's just he's a busy like on top of the day job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's also the rehearsal and there's actual the shows and the. I've been in one show my entire life, aside from like Six Flags, 
um, I was in my my senior class musical of Guys and Dolls. Mm, I was nice. Benny. I was Benny South Street, and it was like the most fun I ever had. <laughs> and like I like caught the bug then, and I always secretly love like obviously I've been I've, nobody believes me ever when I say it, but I always say I'm retired. Like <laughs> singing was like my thing. Like mm-hmm. I used to love singing. Did choir, show choir, select choir, uh, and triple C choir. Like it was a lot of fun for me. It was like the one thing that I was like kind of good at, especially compared to the rest of the people in my school. Um, cause male singers were like few and far between in my school. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's um, it everywhere. That's not yeah, just in school. It's bad. <laughs> it is it's, bad. Yeah. Like we had so many female, uh, people who wanted to be in like show choir for vocal mo- or we were called vocal motion, by the way. Um, <laughs> obviously. Uh, yeah, obviously. Uh, we had so many, so many women who auditioned and were like good. They had to create a separate show choir mm-hmm. just for, just for women, um, on, on, on top of vocal motion, um, called vocalise. <laughs> and it was like it was like if you weren't like it's hard to explain but like a lot of like the freshmen were in vocalese you know like it was it was the um because there's varsity and jv J- and, and there's like champion and varsity was that what it was in show choir i can't remember oh i don't know we only had one yeah i can't remember but well, like, we had middle school and we had high school so. yeah exactly <laughs> um i can't remember where i was going with this I was in show choir and I like singing um, and like doing and, yeah and doing the theater <laughs> like it was so much fun mm-hmm. I had mm-hmm. so much fun with that and I've wanted to do it since but I'm way too shy and I'm way too lazy mm-hmm. <laughs> way too lazy especially hearing like the fact that like we, the man the guy we managed to lock you guys down tonight was like great <laughs> <laughs> was but, great yeah theater is from speaking from experience from that one show 12 years ago <laughs> a lot of fun yeah and oftentimes i mean i wouldn't be able to get through the regular job just to you know without doing the theater stuff uh-huh. yeah you oh know, yeah it just yeah, yeah. makes it worth it you need the fun job and, and the hate job mm-hmm. you know yeah <laughs> one of the, that's what i that's what mine are but actually yeah i, I love my job so i <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what that means <laughs> You're you're one of the lucky ones. I know. Good work. Thank you. Nice. Well, has a really I had to go cool back job. to school for it though. Well, right. So. And you had to learn a a completely different language. I did. I did. <laughs> I think it's time for a segue. Good one. Ooh, nice. we oh. did it. Oh my god, did you guys see that? <laughs> that was on purpose. It's almost like we've been doing this for 290 episodes. <laughs> so, one of the neat things about this run of shows is that there is two shows in particular, right? Is it two? It's two. Okay. Yeah. Two shows in particular will also have signing during the performing. Yes, we will. Not have... not signatures, not autographing. <laughs> right. I mean, we'll do that too. The I entire mean, time but... we will be just writing just, our lines. Just, <laughs> just walk around the set. Just walk up on stage and ask for an autograph. That's like perfect. In the middle. We we love that. <laughs> any kind of wooing from the audience, any kind of audience interaction, <laughs> actors adore that. They they really respond well to it. I like feel going, like you're being sarcastic. Like going up on stage <laughs> to plug in my cell phone into outlet like on the set. Yeah, that would be great. That'd yeah. be great. Yeah. It fits totally. in with the aesthetic of the old mansion thing. <laughs> Yo, Mo's face right now. <laughs> well, look, it's it's Gomez's she, friend Carl. Uh, what a what a what a great guy. M- she Monique was Morticia for a second. <laughs> Right, Morticia face. So, by by signing, we of course we mean uh, sign language and, and interpreters. Yes, will be signing the show. They will be interpreting the show. Inter- God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> you think we're, I'd know? We're kind of novices. Yes. So yep. could you could you uh, enlighten us a bit and explain for the listening audience in sign? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So well, that's that's not a joke. <laughs> I had asked Mo what the logistics of this would be. You're right. If this was going to be like our first ever like uh, YouTube live like interpreted show, like like it, we haven't done any like visual video shows okay. yet. It's all been audio. And like, oh, we're going to talk about you know signing for what hearing impaired or, or deaf, deaf, deaf. And and I was like, and we're just it's an audio show for, and we're going to talk about right. How, how about we try and make this their option? <laughs> And when he's like, how much room do you have? I'm like, <laughs> about two. <laughs> Three's pretty great. But yeah. it would be easier with just the two of us. So, mm-hmm. Go But on. the show's yeah. going to be interpreted. It's going to be interpreted October 28th and 29th, the 28th at 8, the 29th at 2. Um, it's a Saturday and Sunday? Yes, it's yeah. Saturday, Sunday. Um, there will be two interpreters on stage right, audience left. If you... See, that's always confused me. <laughs> always. So if you're looking at the stage, stage on the left. Yeah. yeah. If you're looking at the stage, it's on the left. If you're on the stage, it's on it's the, right. To the right. I went yeah. to school for four years, and I still will have to, like, <laughs> think about it for a moment. Or when somebody says, like, downstage, upstage, I'm like, wait. 
Okay, I got it. There's, <laughs> there's directors that will still say your other left. And, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah absolutely. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they'll they'll confuse it. Directors will not. Oh, they think. absolutely will. I mean, they're translating 300 different <laughs> things, but, you know. And and this, was this your idea? Or? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I Well, I'm an American Sign Language English interpreter by profession, and I have colleagues who are like, we'd love to see you perform. And I'm like, this is community <laughs> theater. We can't really afford it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was able to get interpreters and um, some funding from some local businesses to mm. help pay for the interpreters. Mm-hmm. We also have a, a deaf actor in the show. Hmm. Really? Yes. In the musical. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what the, hence my yes question. Yeah. <laughs> so he obviously does not sing, right. <laughs> but he does dance and react visually Uh Mm -hmm. that's super do you know the um are you like do the do you work with the interpreters Uh, like are they colleagues of yours or are you like hiring a yep no i i know the the interpreters i've worked with them um and i've been interpreting rehearsals for the deaf actor during the rehearsal process Mm -hmm. when i'm not acting (laughs) (laughs) and he's also i mean he's an amazing lip reader Mm -hmm. and so usually if even if mo isn't around Mm -hmm. you know we're able to communicate in you know some ways Mm -hmm. and yeah yeah so did you have to figure out special ways to give cues or Mm -hmm. yes we are still figuring that Mm -hmm. out (laughs) (laughs) it's it's always one of those weird questions when when you talk to your friends and they're like oh i was in rehearsal and they go oh how'd it go like is there Usually you just say, oh, it's fine. You know, mm-hmm. like, what kind of answer can you not give? It's a, I'm not asking right now, by the way. Yeah. You don't have to answer me. Oh, it's, it's fine, Alex. God damn it. <laughs> Rehearsal process is great. <laughs> so no, really. Every is. actor ever. We have to dance. I've only been, my feet stepped on three times today. I'm just yeah. really understanding my character. And <laughs> it's just, I'm really getting in their shoes. And sometimes I don't remember the shoes when I walk on stage. But I just, I really feel like I'm starting to get it. It's hard work, but it's worth it. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I just love what, what I do. what Peter says every day. That's what okay. I say. <laughs> I just love what I do. I don't sweat at all. <laughs> Never. Oh man, <laughs> sweating's the worst. Yeah. We talking about we talking about sweat now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll a segment we call when, "Sweats the Deal." As a makeup artist, when there's people that don't sweat, they're amazing. I don't get they're it. My favorite. I don't understand that. It's, yeah, uh, me neither. We were standing. But, we we do this big. Like near the end dance number between uh-huh. Morticia and Gomez, and the yeah. ensemble joins us. It's a big tango number, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it runs immediately, like no segue at all, yeah. into the final scene. Right, <laughs> and so mm-hmm. I'm sitting there next to her yesterday in rehearsal, and we started to do stuff in costume. Yeah, and meanwhile, my entire face is just a layer of water, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm so sorry, I am so sorry. I'm just like. God, yeah. Mia, I, uh... stage, stage lights and no joke too. Yep. Those things, it's like, oh hey, I walked on stage for thirty seconds and I'm drenched. <laughs> right. Like those mm-hmm. things blaze. Gosh. And Gomez is supposed to be like this cool collect. You know, I mean, oh, yeah. he's kind of neurotic in a lot of different ways. <laughs> yeah. But like he's supposed, you know, in certain certain lights, he's supposed to be there and present. And especially mm-hmm. after that number, mm-hmm. like he's got all of his mojo back. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> but me, the actor, is just like. <laughs> I just want to lie down. Now, now that we've gotten we've talked about the sweat, um, in terms of like uh, I- interpreting shows, and uh, is this the first time um, that I'm aware of? Yes, for this theater, you mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. It, would you see it like c- continuing if like the support would like maintain? You know, because you mentioned you had to get like the support of local businesses and right, stuff. Right. Like, right. Well. So that deaf actor who's in our show is also in the next upcoming show as well. Mm -hmm. So whether or not that director decides to have it interpreted to is up to them. Right. Um, I mean, when you have someone who's in the community in the show, it obviously there's a need there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if... If he's in the show, why wouldn't you have mm-hmm. the interpreters? Right. So that right, way, right. I mean, I can't speak for the director. I don't know the director, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I would mm-hmm. hope that it would put it in, like, get that ball rolling of, yeah, let's do this. Let's make it accessible. What's fun is that in in this next show, he's playing one of the, if you're familiar with Much Ado About Nothing at all, Shakespeare, he's playing 
one of the members of the watch who they're this group of kind of they're part of a b story and the the watch is kind of bumbling and always you know the the leader of the watch dogberry is always like slipping over his words and Mm -hmm. saying the wrong thing and as a member of the the director ryan had a great idea to have leon the the deaf individual to Mm -hmm. actor to come in and you know sign everything and then have one of the other you know kind of loony characters be like Oh yeah, what he said, and, you know, some, something like that, and kind of use it as a gag as well as you uh-huh. know something to showcase his ability because he's you know such a expressive guy, and, uh-huh. right? Mm-hmm. You know, you mentioned that there's going to be two interpreters. Are yes. they going to be like conversing almost? Like, are they going to be saying the same thing, or are they going to be like one is going to pick one person talking and then mm-hmm. the like? How well, does this so going to work? I, I have... Uh, How does sign language I, work? <laughs> sign language so complicated. Uh, so I have interpreted shows before, and every interpreting team is obviously going to do it differently, but you usually break it up where you have... So, like, the interpreter who would be in sign, uh, who would be interpreting for Gomez would not be the same interpreter who would be interpreting for Morticia. Right. Mm. Because then you'd look like a crazy person, you know, <laughs> shifting back really and forth between... Yeah. Right, <laughs> shifting back and forth between the two actors. Right. So if you have two interpreters, Gomez would be one, Morticia would be the other. Um, and then you rotate those other parts as well, so that way there's this constant flow of me, you, me, you. So that way it's not... You know, me looking like a crazy person. Right. Although sometimes mm-hmm. that does happen. Right. Because <laughs> sometimes, let's say the interpreter who's doing Morticia is also doing Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Sometimes Wednesday and Morticia interact. Right. Uh, but I've also seen it where those interpreters, the other interpreter will take on that other character, even though the first interpreter had both. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So that mm-hmm. way they don't look like a crazy person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Are do the I'm super into this right now. The interpreters themselves do they have to memorize the script or are they listening and they're like as the people are talking? A little bit of both. So they obviously have not memorized the entire script. Right. Um, That's they've a made, lot. They, yes. yes. <laughs> they've made themselves familiar with the script. They have a copy of the script. Uh, they have not come to our rehearsals yet, but they're coming next week uh, to observe mm-hmm. and because that's another thing. One thing on paper is one thing, but how I interpret this show as my character mm. and how you read it is totally different. Because you could have this idea of, oh, Morticia would say it this way, but then I say it a different way, and they mm. could have a totally different meaning, mm. even though it's the same English words. Right. And like the tone that you would express it as, mm-hmm. would that be a different sign? It wouldn't be a different sign, but it would be different grammar on your face. Okay. So mm. it so they have to do all of this prep ahead of time, mm. but they can't be. I don't want to say they they can't be too familiar with it because, say we mess up when we skip a huge chunk, <laughs> right. they have to be able to follow with yeah. us. Right. So right. they can't have it memorized and just sign away the yeah. thing that they memorized yeah. because then it's not following what we're doing. So they could have this beautiful <laughs> interpretation of this song, and I skip. A verse. Three whole verses <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's complex. Uh-huh. It is a complex process. Hmm. And they're going to be like, they're, aren't they setting aside or they're not, they're recommending like, Hey, if you require interpretation, yes. it's going to, what you said, it's stage, right? So it's it is the, stage, right? So house left, left. house left. Nice. Yep. Yes. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> but like, and you can, you can plan out like, Oh, Hey, I, I need this. So yeah, I'm going to sit, right. on, yeah. sit on that side. It's not like, God, I hope I can see them. <laughs> right. You know, like, I wonder where well, they're going to be. Well, and at Exit 7, they have assigned seats. So right. that's it, too. You should really get your tickets ahead of time. So that way, if you yeah. do need the interpreter, you can make sure that you're in house left, also known so, as Section 3. So they can order them now. <laughs> so they can order Let's them now. Let's talk tickets. Uh-huh. <laughs> right, right. We're Segway masters today. <laughs> choo, choo, choo. It's even better when you point it out every time. <laughs> Man, those porgs, huh? <laughs> Just bury the lead. So, um, let me derail the conversation. Let's say, again, let's say I'm sitting at home and I go, "Yo, I want to go see the Adams Family." What do I do? Is that what you would say? That's exactly. Exactly. Okay, I'll turn yeah. to my wife and pretty like, much. Yo, yo. I've already let's go to that, that thing we've been planning on going to see for two months. <laughs> She'll say, "Mo, I already invited you on Facebook." <laughs> 
and I accept it. <laughs> so there's there's ways to order tickets. There's there's a bunch of different ways. You can go on directly to the website, mm-hmm. I believe, yep. and and pick out what you what you're looking for. Uh, you can call the theater um, and order your tickets that way. Um, the um, the website has you know email information. The if you see any of our posters around, or the Facebook uh, group has information of you know which websites to use. Would that be the theater website or the or the production website? Is it Exit Seven or is it the? I believe it's Exit Seven. Exit Seven Players dot okay. org. org. I, I have the thing pulled up Perfect. on my thing. <laughs> we know We're everything. So good at this. We came prepared. <laughs> I'm going to click on Find Tickets on the Facebook oh. page here. Oh. On the uh, the Adams Family the musical event page that Mo invited me to that I accepted. You're welcome. And you can go to exit seven players dot org, and you can click on tickets. Okay. Yeah. And, and in case just... there's others happening around the country, this is in Ludlow. This is in Ludlow, Massachusetts. Yes. Correct. At a beautiful theater, if mm-hmm. you ask me, it's one of my favorites to see. At the, of all three theaters that I've been <laughs> in the past couple of years, um, I really like this theater. It has it's like. It's like it has the fold, you know, the, the, the chairs that flip up like in an auditorium. It reminds me of choir, the good old days. Well, it used um, to be a high school. So. Yeah. I didn't know that. I've got grandparents so and much. grand aunts who went to that school when they were growing up. Mm. Like, yeah, you know, 50, 60 years ago. Hmm. It's a nice theater. Yeah. And when, like, when the ensemble gets, I remember during Urin Town, there was one song where, like, everyone was singing and i was mm. like it was loud and there was like <laughs> when they all stopped singing there was like the little echo at the end and i was like it's good to be in a show <laughs> like the, it was it was neat acoustics. yes yeah nice. it's, it's a good theater i really i really dig that um and it's what is it, looking at prices here you can get the preferred seating for the first four rows and that's the first four rows in the center section right yeah and that's only two dollars more we're just pitching right now just yeah. hawking <laughs> Two dollars more because uh, a regular admission is going to be twenty bucks, um, and just just slap it down. And a lot 20. of theaters, if you sit in the very front row, you have to crane your neck up. Yeah. Thankfully, there's a nice little space in between the mm-hmm. front row and mm-hmm. the stage, okay. and so you're not going to be doing that quite so much, you know, because you you have that that extra space to mm-hmm. you know keep your view. What do we have for for music? Is there a track or is there a band? Oh, no, involved? it's band. Mm-hmm. It's band. Ooh. Yeah, wow. we're fancy. <laughs> we're really excited. They're coming in. I think our first rehearsal Sunday. with them is Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so oh. we've been dying to work with them. Uh, like, a, like a pit band? Or like yep. backstage? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah, they're gonna. They're not going to be backstage. They're going to be in our balcony, though. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like up, <laughs> up top, yeah. Like behind the, the audience? Yes. yes. Really? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because for Urine Town, they were on stage. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, but and the same thing for Evil Dead. They were like behind the... Yes, they were yeah. behind us. Yep. But mm. no, this is going to be across from us mm-hmm. and up. Interesting. Hmm. Yes. I'm yeah. very intrigued. <laughs> Live bands are so much... It, it makes good. such a big difference. It, it is. It really, it really does. does. Yeah. It's like going from show choir to play with the track and they play. Never. Mm-hmm. I'm just I'm throwing it back to show choir as many times as I can. I could only hope that the band would have some kind of way to simulate the uh, the doorbell. Uh, we will have I, a sound cue at yeah. some Spoilers. point. Spoilers. There yeah. will be yes, a doorbell. Um, how it happens, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It, um, I'm not the sound guy. I'm the lighting guy. Plays a big part of one of the numbers. You know, yeah. kind of shocking everyone until the right. final note. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's fun. I like the way that the the script and the music integrate certain elements of the sh- of the the TV show and mm-hmm. the movies, and that ways that you're like, oh, I get that, or like, <laughs> oh yeah, that's that thing, right? Like you know, um, don't want to give away too much, but we have a little <laughs> cameo by cousin It at some point in the show, Ooh. and like the overture <laughs> starts off with the the theme song, and it leads into the the or- or overture that you know does okay. pieces from the show. All right, so you mean like. Uh... Too legit to quit's gonna be in there, right? The Adams Family, the rap, MC Hammer, yeah, <laughs> right. Get out. No, the Adams Family, get rap? Out. just get no. out. MC, right. you've, you've lost <laughs> your privileges. <laughs> uh, having seen the touring show years ago, mm-hmm. and like reading up about it ahead of time, one of the things that really struck me was how to create a performance and tell a story. You need conflict of some kind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and the way they explained it out, like I'm again. I'm not going to spoil anything for our listeners, for anyone who wants to come see the show. But I felt like, you know, in some manner, like this was the only way they could have created conflict. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because if you ever, people who are fans of the Adam Stanley, like have recognized this and may have talked about it in the past. But 
the relationship between Gomez and Morticia is amazing. It's gold. It's mm-hmm. fantastic. And it's not like any <laughs> other relationship you see on TV, either back then or now, because now it's like it's a lot of like insulting jabs and uh uh-huh, you're mm-hmm. too fat. And like yeah. you spend Aww. too much money, you know, and, and now they're <laughs> My arguing. Wife. <laughs> they're, they're, arguing, they're always arguing somehow you know and like you, you get to the point where it's like do they actually enjoy each other's company yeah whereas, <laughs> Gomez, yeah. whereas Gomez and Morticia have never had that problem they've always been ridiculously supportive of each other right mm-hmm. and it's like and you always know there there's never like any kind of uh rift between them but with them being the main characters it's like well what would we do to cause something worth making a show out of right yeah. And uh, and I felt this re- it really worked out when I first saw it, and it's like I get it, yeah. and, <laughs> and I'm okay it. with this, and I and I really enjoy where it went from there, because mm-hmm. the resolution was also fantastic. <laughs> I actually gasped like oh. audibly. Oh, wow. <laughs> the, wow. I, I mean, I'll tell you after we we end the show, but like what what that moment was, but it was it was great. I mean, we could give a, a little bit of a synopsis without giving away yeah. the whole sure. show, yeah, yeah. sure, yeah. If, if you guys don't mind, yeah. um, basically, and I think that this is important to mention because it it kind of takes away certain expectations of what the show is. Right. And if someone's like, "How do they make out of something into musical?" Right. right. Exactly. Not knowing what they're going to get. Um, yeah, yeah. The first thing to know is that you know, n- not only is this a different kind of story and take on these characters, but also um, they're changing up some of the dynamic. So right out of the gate in this show, we learn that Wednesday is has grown up to about 18 years old. And she is becoming a young woman. Um, Pugsley is younger than her in this story. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is her falling in love with this normal boy, with this quote-unquote normal guy. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. her coming to terms with, oh my gosh, he has none of these weird, quirky characteristics <laughs> that my family has and that I've hold, held dear yeah. for so long. And I also kind of feel that way about certain things. And so it's it's her trying to figure out, can I coexist with this normalcy? Mm-hmm. Can, um, can he accept me for who I am? What is normal? Is this something that can be clearly defined? And it comes about that they're going to have dinner at the Adams family home Mm -hmm. and the parents who are also very straight laced are going to show up and be thrown (laughs) into this crazy world which is I mean even that is like the hit the history of the Adams family is like normal people coming in and like seeing the living room. Yeah, that's almost and, every yeah. episode of the and show, right? <laughs> and like, it, well, like, and it's always like they walk in and they react to the bear, they react to the, the double headed mm-hmm. tortoise, and uh, and it's like it's normal people experiencing the Adams family, yeah, and mm-hmm. then being like, well, we're normal too. This is what everyone has, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, but it's you know it's a new way to go about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And so one of the things uh, we were asked uh, on in our interview yesterday, we were on Mass Appeal. Um, on local TV, um, the he asked us um, about like what's it like to be like creepy or like to be cast as that. You know how did how did you feel when you found out you were creepy enough to be the Adams? And you know I just very politely explained to him like the Adams family, they they still get excited about things and yeah. they're not like totally dark and morose. They're mm-hmm. they're excited that th- about things that are just different mm-hmm. than everybody mm-hmm. else, and it's just kind of that that understanding that they're not totally into the macabre to be different. Yeah. They're into the macabre because it's exciting to them mm-hmm. and interesting. And they like that. It's like, and I'm just coming to it like right now and mm-hmm. it could have been there the whole time, <laughs> but I'm like, yo, the Adams family is like all about being yourself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Right? I'm getting there. I'm like, you guys are all like at the finish line, like <laughs> sipping <laughs> drinks. And I'm like, guys, I got it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> be yourself. What? what right <laughs> and, and don't care like call other people you're you're the weird one right <laughs> well like the excitement thing i hadn't thought of before whereas like you know you think oh well, they're the original goths and like all the right the hot topic kids who are like aren't impressed by anything right and they're all they, they all it's cool to be bored right <laughs> whereas yeah whereas like for them it's like we're gonna go have an adventure they will excitedly pack in the car to go have their adventure and go visit something new. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, it's fantastic. They go out to the graveyard because they're <laughs> they're excited by the history and the 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 idea that these are things that have passed on but existed and, mm-hmm. and now that they are a part of this legacy. What's what's the game they play where they dig up the graves? It was in the it was uh, at the end of the first I movie. It's called Felony. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> At the very end of the movie, they're like, they're going to go, t- wake up, Auntie Iris. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. They had a name for that game, and they put it on Halloween. It was. it was great. They, they, the, the opening of the show, one of the, one of the ways that the, the show does something really creative with having an ensemble mm-hmm. is that they do it so that the entire ensemble is built out of former Adams Family ancestors. Yeah. And so they're all kind of in this, you know, half alive state, ghostly state. It's like they're ghosts on stage. Right. And so they're helping out Wednesday and her plot to, you know, get be with this guy. Mm -hmm. And so um, they kind of bring that into the picture where it's, you know, we at the very beginning, the opening number is all about summoning the ancestors. Mm -hmm. And it's this big party, (laughs) you know. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna be great. How's how has the costuming been for this so far? It's great. Uh, I was just I'm peeping little, pictures on the Facebook. <laughs> I'm a little biased, but my mom made all the costumes. <laughs> of course. If, if there was anyone else, I would have been disappointed. <laughs> and she actually designed a lot of them herself, so she uh-huh. had to like draft patterns to create the look that she was going mm-hmm. for. For my dress specifically, she there was nothing um, mm-hmm. because there's without giving too much away. My dress has to do something at one point in the uh-huh. show. <laughs> okay, and... okay. That's when I gasped. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Nice. <laughs> so she had to create that yeah. effect, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which there was no pattern for. Right. Uh, and she li- went to the interwebs and they weren't any helpful. So uh, so she created herself. Uh-huh. And she was so good to me because she she found this suit, this Gomez suit, the, you know, the pinstripe classic yeah, right. suit. Yeah. And... I was I was wearing I put it on for the first time and I'm like, there's no pockets <laughs> because you know both Raul Julia pockets. and uh, John Aston had yeah. this pocket that they would constantly stick their hand in yeah. and yeah, you know yeah. they would talk and express with one hand while the pocket was you know very sophisticatedly uh-huh. in the other and so I asked could I have pockets and she was like, okay <laughs> and she did it and it was it was like the the nicest thing because she didn't have to you know yeah but. Yeah. Just because I asked, and, and she was more yeah. than willing to go out of her way to make this thing. Well, now you happen. don't have to act that part. You can actually exactly <laughs> right. right. Fester pr- just act, asked for pockets too, so it's not just. Did him. he really? He did. Yeah. God, oh he's so Fester, needy. Jeez. <laughs> Hollywood God. just gets goes. Right I didn't to ask his... for pockets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jesus. Do you have a like a younger actor to play uh, a Pugsley? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's nine. Nine wow. or ten? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. He's great. He is. He's okay. really great. Mm-hmm. He he jumped in there, and we were all excited to be around him, and you know, and 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 really work with him. And he was he was pumped to work. He was working with the the children's show that was beforehand. Okay, mm-hmm. and um, he kept talking about to the other the other kids <laughs> like how excited he was because he was going to be with the grown ups doing the that's the that's Adam's like, family. Yeah, yeah, yep. and so we we've, we've loved to have him and and work with him. And that's I cool. actually worked with him this summer on that youth production. Yeah. And, yeah, so I got to know him during that, and he was super excited for Adam's family the entire awesome. time. Not to say that he wasn't excited about the youth right. production, but right. he was more excited about being in an adult production. Because uh-huh. uh-huh. he's mega bragging rights. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. He is one kid out of twenty four. Right. There's like twenty four of us. People who are seventeen to probably like undisclosed age yeah (laughs) right whatever grandma might be 102 (laughs) yeah because uh because uh the the ghost adams who are ancestors Mm -hmm. uh in the the version i saw they had like period-esque outfits yeah and they do a little one going all the way back to like a caveman yep we have a caveman right they all have these little like specific characteristics yeah. you know you've got the maid but then you've also got the flight attendant adams like mm-hmm. it's it's very cartoony so you but can it's look at fun. them and like tell what time they stepped out of oh absolutely yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. that's 100 awesome. and what's cool too is that our director had each one of them come up with their own name mm-hmm. for themselves and Ooh. how they died which you don't actually get to know that in the the story but, but it's what drives them yeah in the show, which is pretty cool. Yeah. You know, I should have planned this out better. Yeah. And um, us, we what? could. <laughs> <Come> <laughs> we could have played that Adam's Family board game that I bought at Broomfield what? this summer. Yeah. You were in Broomfield this summer. Yeah. You didn't tell me. I'm more interested about the Adam's Family board game, but <laughs> there's a lot of emotions going on. There's, there's like a lot rage of rage and excitement. All <laughs> I'm sweating so much. That was probably the closest I've been to Mo <laughs> in the past year. Oh. Probably, but. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like and like you can collect family members and, and the cards and everything. You can collect family members. Yeah. As you yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> right. It was cool. Awesome. 
Adam's family is coming up. When are the dates again? October 20th? Through November 3rd? 5th. 5th. The 5th. And then you, if you want to go see it interpreted. The 28th and shows, 29th. October 28th and October... The 28th is the late one? Yes, that's at 8. And the 29th is at 2. Right. So you can go see it interpreted. Same price for interpreted show. Yep. Just go. Just go. Just go. <laughs> um, but don't take up the section three seats if right. you're not It's true. Deaf. Yeah, if you don't need it. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so I would imagine no one listening to the show is deaf right now <clears throat> listening to our podcast. But if you have friends, relatives, acquaintances, mm-hmm. alert Colleagues. them. Co- yeah, anyone. Yes. And be like, Here, I have. I heard of this thing. That's the And we can all go to the it. thing. It's going to be re- I am so... <laughs> I can't even tell you. <laughs> like, when did it drop initially? That like, it was, like two months ago. Well, we auditioned well, in May. Right. <laughs> it's been a long. It's been a long yeah. period of time. It's just like it's the epitome of the season. It's, we're like finally, even though it's like ninety degrees in here, <laughs> right. we're yeah, finally it's really warm in here right yeah, now. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens when four people just talk. Um, but like, it's it's everything that makes me happy. And because we've been mm. working on it for so long, we are just dying to bring it to literally people. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally dying right <laughs> um yeah it's gonna be rad um so check it out exit seven players you can go see uh the adams family you can see two of my best friends in the world uh <laughs> peter and mo um yes. living it up as as morticia and gomez it's gonna be rad um that's all about all i got yeah 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 how what's up with you guys Oh, just li- no. We don't. We don't. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, we're we're done. We're done. We're done. Uh, we're done. I, I would like to plug uh, Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Oh uh, uh, yeah, this yeah. December. A lot of misdirection in that trailer. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of misdirection. A lot of misdirection. See, Mark Hamill said something. He said about, the thing. Sorry, he said the yeah. thing. About, and then they showed us someone. No, I mean like he, he said about? a thing on a on another thing. I didn't see the thing. We'll talk about. We'll talk about. I haven't watched it yet. So. <sighs> All right, that's gonna do it. Um, go see the Adam Sandler. Go watch people sing and dance about uh, how awesome dying is. <laughs> it's not what it's about. <laughs> uh, did I ruin it? I ruined it. Oh well. You Anyways, seen it. you don't know what that is. Exactly. So that, that, that could be exactly what it's about. There's a nuke at the very end. It just <laughs> that room blows up. Until next time, I've been Jr. I'm Alex. I'm Monique. And I'm Peter. And this has been episode 291 of Opinions May Vary. <laughs>